Oh, hi! You just caught me doing my homework for my biography class. Um, I'm Dana Jenks. I teach film and physics at George Washington Carver, if you don't know me. And if you do know me, you're wondering, where is Miss Jenks this week? Why isn't she in teaching class? And here I am um, taking a biography course that's very much been helpful for the film class, but also helpful in um, helping me become a better person. And so we're working from these two books, and I've really discovered this week is that need for inner peace in, a, in order to be able to grow and to, to learn my story. Um, and so what we're focusing on is, you know, why on earth? So I might have wondered, why on earth did something happen in my life? And I think the valuable insight that I've gotten this week is that all the things that I thought maybe were really bad things that happened in my life, that actually they needed to happen for the good things to happen in my life. And um, I think the most important thing that I have uh, discovered this week is just uh, how valuable good community is. And so I'd really like you to meet some of the special people uh, that I've interacted with this week and to learn a little bit more about what biography is. Um, so we're here. Yes. Um, at uh, Biography and Social Arts. So what brought you here? Um, I had a friend who had done this training, and she would sometimes bring these social exercises into group settings, um, exercises that allowed the people participating to, um, I don't know, learn about each other more through the uh, through some of the ways that biographical exercises work, using uh, postcard pictures. Um, you might ask a question and try to find a postcard that uh, resonates with you in relationship to that question. And then you can have a conversation with your friends or colleagues about why that card spoke to you. And, and somehow it's a tool just to go a little deeper into one's own s story where we can understand maybe ourselves a little more deeply, clearly and also each other. And so the phrase social art, biography and social art, really attracted me, that second part. Um, how to develop empathy, how to be a better listener, um, to develop those kinds of skills. And I feel like I'm really gaining that, gaining those capacities through this program. A highlight for me has been what we call in the course the dyad. And the dyad is this opportunity to talk with another person, Maybe you can do it with multiple people, but we've only done it so far with two people. Maybe that's why it's called a diet. And uh, where there's a speaker and there's a listener. And so far we've used a theme or a question where the listener uh, invites the speaker to speak about this question. For example, this week it was, um, what do you do to avoid relationship? And then the speaker is given an ample amount of time just to respond, to reflect on the question and then respond. And the listener has to work on simply on listening and not doing all these cues that we normally do, like nodding and uh-huh, uh-huh, um, but, but to actually really create an open space to really receive the other person. And that's taking me to a whole new level of social dynamics. Um, that I really, really appreciate. Um, but I, I want to use my skills in biography, actually, in my wherever I'm going to be living, um, to invite people over to just share stories or create contexts where strangers can can hear the stories of other strangers. And um, Chris, one of the participants in the course, 
said something to me uh, in a conversation. Like, we all have... Um, there's a deep desire to talk about what we're not talking about. that might have been difficult for me aren't like holding me to be a certain way. My name is Susan West Kurtz. I live in Jamestown, Rhode Island. And I've been aware of biography work kind of unconsciously for many years. And I began a writing uh, project two years ago. I'm writing my memoir looking through the lenses of addiction, adoption, and anthroposophy. And a, a close colleague said, if you're writing a memoir, you really have to look into me uh, biography work. And uh, this is the third week of the first year, and uh, we're doing a lot of conversations, dialogues, listening exercises, and um, it's the kind of experience where I'm just taking a lot in and developing wonderful relationships with um, the other participants in the, in the training. Christopher is, is one of us, and we're sitting here in what we call Middle Kitchen, <laughs> where we've had a lot of uh, activities and gatherings outside of class, and the thing that I'm enjoying about it is how quickly one develops strong relationships working with biography, even though we come from varied backgrounds. But biography work gives you kind of a context to work out of. Just learning how to listen deeply to, to another human being. You hear something that is familiar to you, even though you haven't experienced their exact experience, there's a familiarity and you realize something is bigger holding all of us. So I've always been afraid of art. Uh, so, you know, I'm a little bit shy about drawing pictures, but it's easier for me to write. And so uh, biography work brings in clay and writing and drawing and painting. And it doesn't mean you have to be good at it, because it's just a process expression of a process you're in. Um, and I provided Waldorf education for my children, and I never, I, I was a disinterested student, so I'm kind of like going back and having the opportunity to have a taste of Waldorf education as an adult. So I could go on and on about it, but it's, it's, it's a huge, wonderful, Opportunity. My name is Chris Burke, and I live in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where I am a psychology professor at Lehigh University. And, uh, you know, what really brought me to this course in particular is that uh, as a psychology professor, and, and also someone who has been studying anthroposophy in my, in my daily life, uh, you know, I've really been working a lot and thinking a lot about how do I blend these two worlds together? How do I you know, take what I'm what I'm learning through the world of, of anthroposophical study and, and really integrate it into the work that I'm doing um, at the university. And you know, one of the, the the real sort of important aspects of of anthroposophy is, is really sort of realizing the full potential of, of you as a human being and 
uh, thinking about the students that I work with and, and thinking about the experiences that they've had and the education that they've had coming into, into the college environment, um, you know, I, I realized that, that was, those were questions that, that, that they never really had the opportunity to pose to themselves. You know, really, who am I and, and what is my potential? Where, where am I going? What's my path? And, and uh, how do I make decisions about moving forward? So, um, you know, as I was looking for where are the existing connections between anthroposophical study and uh, psychology, uh, biography work seemed like the most logical, logical place to start. And, you know, biography work is really about, you know, looking at the patterns in your life in order to, to really try to understand uh, that story of, of you and the threads that are weaving through that story of you leading you from the past through the present into the future. And uh, that's what really drew me to the course. And, uh, you know, the, the, the full title of the course is Biography and Social Art. And uh, I saw this as a course in biography, and I thought, well, social art, I'm not really sure what that is. That's kind of an, an add-on. Uh, it'll be extra, or it'll be, you know, not something that really is relevant for me. But what I've learned in, in the process of, of going through these, these first three weeks of the course is that... Um, it's, it's in some ways the most important part, this, this social artistry, this, this working together to learn about your story, it, it's absolutely essential. You know, the, the way that, that I look back on my past and recall my story and think about the events that occurred to me, uh, it, it's so, uh, you know, it's, it's so, uh, no, it's, it's, it's enlivened, enriched so much by sharing with other people, um, by, by being heard, being listened to, and, and by having the opportunity to hear other people's stories and see how other people express their experiences and express, um, you know, why did this happen and, and what were the consequences of, of this particular um, uh, situation. You know, that, that's given me this, this real appreciation for that social component. And, you know, and, and really connects it to something that I've been sort of uh, uh, informally interested in in a very long time, which is how do we rebuild community? How do we restore community? And as, as I've been bringing the exercises that, I, that we've learned in this course back to the university, both in the work that I do with my students in, in the classroom setting, and we do these exercises uh, as, as ways to help the students get to know each other and themselves better. Uh, but I've also started bringing these exercises to broader groups of, of faculty and staff and students and, and really pe engaging people in, um, in dialogue with each other about their, their personal stories. And, and what I've found is, is that people are really yearning for this kind of social connection. People really, um, you know, as, as, as difficult as it might seem or as in, improbable as it might seem starting to, to plan an event or a discussion, uh, you know, once you get people in the room, first of all, people will show up. And, and once you get people sitting down, they, they just are, are eager to dive into these kinds of conversations. They love to tell the story of themselves and to think about the story of themselves and to, and to really hear other people's stories as well. And, um, you know, this work is a way of getting people out of the, the sort of abstract fog of everyday life where, you know, we talk about, you know, we get little bits and pieces of things through the media and we're getting ideas from other people. Um, but how often do we really take that time to look inside of ourselves and, and think through our story and, and really listen to other people? So um, that for me so far has, has been a really great surprise to, to see the, the value, the real strong value of that social artistry uh, in, in the process of working through biography. Either of you have anything else you want to add? Um, I would say go to the website. There's a beautiful website, uh, Biography and Social Art, Arts, and uh, just explore a little bit um, because it kind of is the next step in what we all have to do to heal and to become not just to heal, but to really manifest who we want to be. Yeah. Um, and so it's a, it's a wonderful, I don't want to say tool, but it's a way to, be, we're all about stories. We love Hollywood, we love everything a story, but our own stories are wonderful. 
Yeah, and I guess I, my last comment would be just to add that, uh, you know, in the world around us right now, that, you know, there's such clear signs of, of d divisiveness mm -hmm. and, and how, how divided and separated we have become from each other. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'm really increasingly convinced that this kind of work that we're doing is, is the answer, you know, getting people to come together and, and work through these issues from a very personal level and, uh, you know, get away from the media, get away from all of these outside influences yeah. and really just take some time with yourself and another person mm -hmm. and just be open. Anna Keller. I'm coming from Switzerland, which is in Europe. Um, I'm born in the Netherlands, so if you listen very closely, you hear some Dutch accent in my English speaking. What is biography and social art? Well, biography is very funny because it's like the story you have within you. It's like standing in the sh sun and, and you have a shadow, so that's biography, it's always there. And if you, with biography work, you just put a light on it. And then you start to read this shadow kind of thing. And, and you wonder, where am I come from? And you discover precious things you never thought about. And then you turn off the light and you joke around and you're back to normal life, creating new biography. So how do you plan on using this? You go home, you have, you, you interact with your story, the light's on, and then you go home, and then what happens? Yeah, well, I use it in my office. I'm a naturopath doctor, and um, people come with variety things they want to talk about, family things, life things. So there I use it, there, there's the spotlight. And the main thing I do is I listen. I listen and I create a safe space and they start to talk and they are amazed what they are talking about and they go like, wow, did I really say that? And so my ears are kind of VIP invitation to, to bring the best out of who is coming to see me. And then when I go home, my therapeutical coat, I just hang away, but still there is biography work. like how I talk to my kids, how I make jokes, humor is very important in my work and it's still there but not conscious. I'm not going home and like okay let's do biography with my kids. It's just coming naturally. What would you say to somebody wanting or thinking about taking a biography class or? Oh well, you know, there, there is a time in your life where you think you know everything where you think nobody should tell me something because I know. And when you overcome that period of your life, then you should take biography classes. Then you should, should go somewhere telling your story and then you, you discover you, you were right at that age, but it doesn't count anymore. So if somebody is like interested in, in why I'm here, what is this all about? Yeah, then you should take biography classes. And if you struggle in life, find somebody with some biography skills to give you like a, how do you say, a torch. So you can go in your own life and say, oh, well, oh, that was scary. But when I put some light on it, oh, you know, that was actually cute, you know. So you, you realize where you come from. So if you struggle, biography work would be something for you. And if you want to make your life more fruitful and more happier and more colorful and more strange and odd and painful and everything just more kind of who am I go for biography work and always take humor with you always <laughs> that's the main thing I just want to add humor is the most important thing to live with your own biography Wow, thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. I'm Sydney Schaefer and I was, am the founder.
founder of this program, although I have now passed the directorship on to my colleague Patricia Rubano. Um, it goes back to the late 90s when, when the program first began. And um, I was teaching at Sunbridge College, very interested in questions of human development in all ways, and had been occasionally offering biography workshops in different places, and I felt that there was such a, a need and a wish, a need for the work and a wish of the part of people to do the work, and that we really needed to have a training for that. I, my style is collabor collaboration, so I thought of a group of people who could help to bring that about. with a, a Dutch art therapist who I had met and really appreciated the way she worked with people and with the arts. Uh, a colleague from England named Margaret Matthews who I had also worked with in the past who was a biographical counselor. Um, my husband Chris Schaefer who worked with a lot of organization development questions, group facilitation, and so on. And the Rubanos as well. You say something. <laughs> yeah, well, and I personally have been a Waldorf early childhood teacher and always been interested in human development. So Waldorf education is a very developmental model, but we sort of only talk about up to 21 and development goes on beyond that. So as I became more interested in that level of things, and my husband, Joseph, both of us went to England and did the biographical counseling training with Margaret Matthews, and then lived here where Signe was. And as this work grew, we became involved doing workshops ourselves with people. And I love Signe's vision of biography work being more than just about the human phases, but it's really about life 